Welcome to Beautiful Savior's Reflection on the Four Candles on the Advent Wreath. Really, the Five Candles on the Advent Wreath. We're going to talk a little bit about those. Various members will tell us about each one that we light. And those of you who from church know that we light one on every one of the four weeks before Christmas. And on Christmas Eve, we light the last of the candles, the white one, which is called the Christ Candle. The lighting of an Advent wreath is a custom that began in the 16th century in Germany by Lutherans and Catholics. The original purpose of the wreath was to bring into focus on Christmas rather than on Advent as a distinct season unto itself. The symbolism of the Advent wreath candles goes back then to the 16th century. Set on the branches of the Advent wreath are four candles, three purple candles and one pink candle. A more modern tradition is to place a white candle in the center of the wreath. As a whole, these colored Advent candles represent the coming of the light of Christ into the world. And the Advent wreath I just showed you has that white candle in the middle. Each week of Advent on Sunday, a particular Advent candle is lit. The Catholic tradition states that the four candles represent the four weeks of Advent. Each one stands for a thousand years, totaling 4,000. 4,000 is the number of years from the time of Adam and Eve until the birth of Christ. On the first Sunday of Advent, one, can one purple candle is lit. This candle is typically called the prophecy candle in remembrance of the prophets, primarily Isaiah, who foretold the birth of Christ. As I light this candle, let us pray that God grants us hope. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. So now I'll share a few words on what hope means to me. Personally, hope means a lot of things. For starters, hope means getting up in the morning. Waking up gives me hope that I will make that day better than the last. This helps me to start my day out strong. Secondly, hope means that I can keep going. I know for most people my age, it got especially hard during the pandemic, not being able to go out and see my friends but my hope and prayers to God has been helping me through it. Lastly, hope means wishing good on to others. God always has a plan for all of us, and that gives me and others around me hope for the next generation. This is what hope means to me. Thank you. On the second week of Advent, the second purple candle is lit. This candle is called the angel's candle and it represents peace. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Luke chapter 2 verse 13 and 14. My interpretation of peace is that peace is within all of us. Right now, it is within all of us. There are no words adequate for the description. Peace is when your heart is filled with gratitude for what you have been given without wanting more. Peace is when you understand the value of this blessing called the breath that you have been given. 
peace is to admire that one beautiful lifetime every single day. So I haven't defined it, but I've told you what I feel peace is. It's a smile, it's a tear, it's a feeling. And when you know it, there's no mistaking it. Let's end in a prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for making peace possible in every circumstance. Thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son to make peace a reality on this side of heaven. Let me be a peacemaker within my home and outside its walls. In Jesus' name, amen. On the third Sunday of Advent, the pink or rose-colored candle is lit. This candle is customarily called the shepherd's candle, and it represents joy. As I light this candle, let us all pray that God grants us joy this holiday season. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news and joy for all of the people. Today, in a town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. He is Lord. Luke 2, 8 through 11. The holidays are about gathering with family and friends and having good cheer, listening to your favorite songs. Two of my favorite. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. And my other favorite. Oh, come all ye faithful. Joyful and triumphant. What songs bring you great joy this holiday season? Joy, pure joy, comes from God as a result of our faith. Joy is greater than happiness. It is extreme happiness which cannot be deterred. Joy is also trusting God even when doubts fill our minds. Our joy isn't dependent upon what's going on in our lives. It could be quarrels on the job, depression in our home, or even this worldly sorrow of this pandemic. No matter the circumstance, our joy should be evident amidst any trials that come our way. James 1-2 says, count it all joy when tribulations come before us. God's joy for us is never ending. It enables us to enjoy all that he has given us, family, friends, shelter, but more importantly, our salvation. Psalms 51 says, make me hear joy and gladness and restore the joy in my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud your righteousness. Yes, we know that this pandemic is causing us great grief and strife. We're not able to gather with family and friends as we normally do because of social distancing. But remember, God tells us in John 15 and 11, let my joy remain in him so that my joy may be full. Because no earthly thing or being can ever give us complete joy like Christ can. I'll leave you with two options this holiday season. You can either have an attitude of fear, bitterness, or resentment, or you can have unspeakable joy through Christ, which is an attitude of gratitude. Let us all pray. 
Dear Lord, fill our hearts this Advent season with immeasurable amounts of joy. Let it be encompassed in you, King Jesus. The gift of joy that you have bestowed upon us should be shared with all who we encounter. In Jesus' name, we rejoice with gladness. Amen. Joy to the world. On the fourth Sunday in Advent, we light the last purple candle. It represents love. Some traditions call this the Bethlehem candle, symbolizing Christ's manger. Luke says, this shall be a sign unto you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. For those of you who don't know me, I am Marilyn Burrell, the only charter member still living, and I have been a member of Beautiful Savior for over 60 years. I'm currently 96 and have had many memories here at Beautiful Savior and many life experiences where I found myself in need of hope. Today, I'd like to speak with you about the word of hope. For me, hope is a four-letter word with a significant amount of anticipation attached to it. Advent is also a season with a significant amount of anticipation attached to it. I think of hope every day some examples in my world are, I hope that my family remains free from the virus. I hope that I have complete healing from my recent surgery, eye surgery. I hope for healing for others. And I also hope for the best for this congregation. When I think of the word hope, I also think of what each individual letter means. H is for healing. Healing for not only me, but for others. O is for others. Doing for others as we would like them to do for us. P is for prayer. I pray every day. E is for Christ's everlasting promise. This Advent, please join with me in looking forward with hope to Christ's everlasting promise, looking forward with eager anticipation and prayer to the coming of Christ's kingdom when he returns for his people.
The last of the candles to be lit is the Christ candle. It is white and it's lit on Christmas Eve. The Christ candle is called that because it re represents Christ's coming into the world. The color white represents purity. Christ is the sinless, spotless, pure Savior. Those who receive Christ as Savior are washed of their sins and made white as snow. Isaiah said it way back when, Come now and let us settle the matter, said the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are as red crimson, they shall be like wool. Let us take a moment and think a little bit about this Advent season and maybe say a prayer. Lord, be with us in this Advent season. Be with us in this time of turmoil. Let us know that there is no one as steadfast in keeping his promises as you. And the first promise is that you would send your son to forgive our sins and make us white as snow. So as we complete Advent, we move into the Christmas season. May Advent, this Advent reflection, help you grow in faith. And may all of us look forward to the birth of Christ on Christmas and the Christmas season. Amen.